Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my studio and welcome to my channel. Now, if you're like me, you have a lot of canes, a lot of canes. And if you're like me, sometimes you don't know what to do with them. If you're like me, sometimes they're not the best canes you've ever made in your life and they don't stand up to, let's say, a simple pendant or even a pair of earrings. I like these, but uh, believe me, not all canes will. So what do you do with them? They're perfectly good. You've invested all this time into making them. They're good for something. Believe me, they're good for something. You know what they're good for? Bugs. A gnu. Even a couple of jaguars. And that's what we're gonna do in this class. So grab the canes you have that you want to use. Maybe grab a cup of coffee. And let's get started. Okay, so um, let's make a bug. I thought I shot this before, but you know, I evidently turned the camera off when I thought I turned it on. So here is the bug. I have to do him again. He's so cute. Okay, and I have quite a collection of canes, right? I have the four days four days. And then because I'm a glutton for punishment, I made another one on a fifth day. So I think I want to use this one, the fifth day. And um, you can see I did actually extend a little bit of a line there. I really like that because it kind of pulls this element out to a point. I like it. Okay, so I will be able to make bugs like for the rest of my life. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to reduce this just a little bit. Not much, just a bit. Okay. Okay, so there's the cane I'm gonna use primarily, and I'm going to use this cane for the midsection of the body right there. And I'm going to use this little tiny leaf cane for the antenna, and I will select some other elements. Now, this is actually a bullet box. It's a J&J &J 22 Hornet, so I guess 22 caliber bullets, shotgun, I don't know what they are. Anyway, they fit in there. But for our purposes, I think they're perfect for storing tiny canes. Here's another one you can see. I have many tiny canes and it's perfect because then I can just go get them when I need them. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I have to make the um, lower part of the body so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scrap clay here. I'm just going to roll a cylinder, a tight cylinder. Okay, just a very tight cylinder. <laughs> yep. I thought I shot this one and I can't find the footage, which means I didn't shoot it. Mm -hmm. I did not shoot it. It happens. Let me check. Yeah, the camera. My little phone camera is in fact running. Yay me. All right, so... This lower part of the body, he's actually quite large. 
So let me just take this much and form this into a ball, kind of a ball, like so, like that. Now, when you're rolling a ball of clay like this, if you put a lot of pressure on and you roll and the clay goes slip, 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 that means there's air inside. And if that happens, you should start again. There's no slipping here. All right, so here I have my nice little ball. Now I'm gonna draw the point out by taking the ball, placing it here, at the base of my palm and just lightly rolling like that. And I'm starting to draw the point out, see? Mm -hmm. Now, I will refine it with my fingies like that. Mm -hmm. looks good. Now I'm going to take my rigid blade and I'm going to cut it in half. Now I have two bugs, not the same size. I try to cut them exactly the same, but you know, when my nose is not actually over the clay, it's kind of hard, you know, I'm like holding my hands out and so anyway, it's all right. It's okay. There's absolutely no requirement that my bugs be all the same size. Okay, so let's cut a slice off of our cane. Woohoo! I was asked a question the other day, and it was about how I cut and how it is that I managed to cut so evenly. And you know what the secret is? I cut slow. You know, there's no need to cut fast. I say this a lot, I think. It's not a race. Okay. This is a pity one. Pity. Now let me pull it out a bit. Yeah, I like this one. I like it a lot. Okay, I'm gonna pull out the point a little bit more. And now for me, it's a bit easier to hold the cane slice and then to take the form And sort of push it into the cane slice. You guys saw what happened there. Now I will start sort of easing it in. You know, if you guys sew, you know how you ease fabric into like a set-in sleeve, for instance. There's more fabric than there is room, but you figure it out. You just ease, ease it in. Mm. I think this is gonna be a nice looking bug. Okay, now I'm just gonna flip it over and just trim some of the excess away. 
Sometimes I hold it up and sometimes I just lean it like that and then hold the blade just right there, cut straight down. I love it. I do. Okay, now I do have a little bit of space here so I can fill that space in with something else. Let me take a look and see what I have. I have so many canes just hanging around. Let me cut for a minute because I don't see, well, let me, I just really wanna fill in some space. Mmm, this color is, mmm. Oh, well, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Do I have any other triangular ones? I have a violet triangle here. I have this guy. Maybe this guy's better, the lime green. Let me take a look. No, I like him. I have the feeling some of you will be looking for these little bullet boxes. I think if you go to a sporting goods store, maybe even uh, Walmart, I don't know. I don't really shop a lot at Walmart. Okay, excellent, cute. Okay, so maybe now I'm going to take a little round one. Not that round one, maybe. What would happen if I stuck? Nah, wrong, wrong. Turk. Turk is nice. Look at this little guy. Woohoo. Maybe a little red guy. Once again, primarily I'm filling up space here. I'm not all that concerned with the actual pattern. I think pretty much anything's gonna be okay, so let me use this. Let me use this guy. Sweet. <gasps> Look, you are certainly lopsided, mister. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to put wings. I'm going to cover that with a little bit of wing action. Okay, so there's the bod. Put my little canes away. Okay. All right, so let's make the next part of the body, which is this section right here. I'm going to go back like this. Of course, it's smaller, so let's just cut that much of it. Now I'm gonna try to roll this into a ball. You big enough? Yep, I think he's big enough. Okay. 
cut you in half. All right, so this part of the body will go right there. Right there. Now, he could have been a little taller. Uh, that part of the body's a little lower. That's okay. And now I'm going to take this leaf cane and I'm going to cut a couple of slices off. Cut that first one off, put that in the scrap bin. Try to find this the middle. Is that the middle? Pretty much. I don't know about you guys. I'm tired of winter. It's winter. It's been a long, cold, lonely winter. Hmm. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to take this. I'm just bit of a split there. I don't think it's such a big deal though. Oops. Okay, now this guy will go like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little bit off of this end, a little bit off of there, and then push them together. So I've got a bit of a flat area like that. See? little flat and then right here and then these two flat parts will go together like so and I think they'll stick together a little bit better this way okay good deal all right now do I need to put something right there? And eh, it's probably not a bad idea. So what shall I put there? Maybe this guy? Maybe, oh, maybe this guy. Once again, I'm just trying to fill space. Don't necessarily want to call attention to it. Let's give this a go. you know what I did last time? I actually took this little tiny cane. See, I put the cane there and there. Let's just do that. A lot of my canes get reduced like this. Because why not? Da, 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 da. 
I want a berry or maybe a grape. That look like a little teeny grape. Don't have anything this kind. Wait, here's a berry. Teeny. Teeny berry. Now, when you look at my little box here, you can see they're not complicated canes. They're just very, very simple little canes. But they're very useful for something like this because then I have a nice little selection of little teeny canes that I can pull out and use and not have to stop and make them. I mean, this will probably last me the rest of my life. Okay, so now we need to put a little head, this little head, and it's going to be black and it's tiny. Well, after this, there's a, an elk or a gnu or something, and then a little puma or cougar but you know I really like making the bugs all right so round like this now I'm going to take my fingies and pinch like that and then push the back of the head and look it's a bug head Okay, so now I will tell you, oops, excuse me. What I really need right now is a tile. I almost squashed them. Now I can flatten him out a bit and make him bigger this way. Maybe a little less tall. Now, oh, let me stick his little head there. Okay, dude, there you go. Oh, dude. Eyeballs, we need eyeballs. What color eyeballs? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Be nice if I had a little bullseye, some kind of bullseye cane. Hmm. Let me look at this eyeball. Do you want black eyes, black and white eyes? been talking to a bug for 20 minutes. Okay. Well, Are these acceptable bug eyes? Bug eyes. They are definitely bug eyes. Okay, so there are bug eyes. And you know the antenna on this guy, just a little piece of gold clay that I tapered the ends of and curled around. But I think I'm gonna give him different ones. I'm just gonna cut slices off of here. I did that with another bug and I really liked it. And why not? Why not? Okay, dude. Okay. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to have to lift your head a little and stick this underneath. Okay. Doink. I'm going to curve. I can just curve your antenna like that. Okay. Now, here is the body, the head, and the antennae. Now we need wings. Now, this guy, when I did him, I put butterfly wings on, but you know, I made these. This was part of the epic five, four day, five day caning thing I did. I was just bound and determined to do it. I was like, I know I did it once. I can do it again. So I did it again. I may go back to butterfly wing, but I, I just have to try this because I think this is going to be quite a nice little wing. So I'm just going to reduce it because this is too big. I'm just going to reduce it and pull it up. <laughs> okay, so let's put on some wings. Now, if this setup looks a little different, it's because it is. This is actually a pickup shot because I showed you how to make the wings down here. <laughs> so... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So I had reduced the wing a bit. Let's make it smaller. Schmuller. That's a good looking wing there. And we're going to need four. So let me cut this one off the end. And, you know, they're not really, really thin. They're not really, really thick either. But uh, let me show you. There's the thickness. And these two point at the body. So let's just put them down first. This is the actual one I made yesterday. So just anchor that there and then bring this around. Now, this wing is larger, you see. I didn't reduce it quite as much. So let's make one that's a little bit larger. If I want to make it smaller, all I would have to do is continue the reduction. And just kind of drape this around like... Like so. Now, do I want to bring this all the way down here? That's kind of interesting. There we go. Now, let me see what happens here. Let's cut two more. And take this, and I push this over a bit like so. And let me just anchor the tip of the wing down to the tile. Let's do this this way. Try to find the corresponding spot on the other side, like so. 
So yeah, this guy has bigger wings than this one. This guy has little wings. And I think I'm going to leave it just so we can see what the difference is. Now, maybe I'll pull the wing up a bit and see. Like so. Actually, you know what? Why not take both wings and have them pointing a bit further out to the side? Like so. They don't all have to be the same, do they? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And why not at least show something different? Okay, there we go. Not too bad. This guy might benefit from being a bit smaller. It's kind of like this lower wing. If it were just a tiny bit smaller, would probably look better. As long as you don't really press the pieces so firmly down, I think you are you can lift and change. So let's just reduce this a bit further. Make the lower wing just a little bit smaller. I think it's a nicer shape. The two wings will create a better shape. Okay, so here we go. Let's cut two wings. Okay, and now let's put the larger wing above, like so. Hmm. Now, are they even? Yeah, very good. Good, good, good. And I think I'll put just a little something in there. It's nice when you have a selection of these tiny canes to work off of. Oops. I cut it and then it disappeared. Okay, so there is one wing arrangement. Here is another wing arrangement. I like them. So now, let's cure this on the tile, just like this. I could put a crystal, okay, I'll put a crystal in. Okay. Oh, here's my little crystal thing. So, we're not gonna overdo it. Not going to overdo the crystal thing. Let's see, where should I put it? I could put one right there, which is where I have been putting them. And I think I'm gonna pick a crystal AB. This guy, crystal AB. Put him down. And I take the 
back of the pencil and just push it down in. Does you want the clay to actually capture the crystal so it doesn't pop out? Okay, that looks good. Could put little teeny tiny ones here at the eyes. Just have to pick them up. Come on, you. Like so. Push it down in. Turn it. And push it in like that. Okay, so now this little guy is going to go in the oven and then I'll be back. Okay, so there is something that I almost forgot. I put this in the oven and I had to pull it back out again. You know, these are not huge pieces of clay, but they are solid masses. So it probably is going to help to take a very fine needle like this acupuncture needle. And then in places where you won't see... Just poke holes. And I think this, just poking these holes in these places that you will never see, really does help. It prevents cracking. So see right here that space between, I'm just going to, because basically, what, what are these? They're just little vents. They're vents. Now, I think I'm just going to go straight down into this black area, too. Like so. And this needle is so fine. You don't want to use like a sewing needle or something. Sewing needles are too thick. Like so. And it helps. Okay, just even those few will help us a lot. All right, now the piece goes in the oven. So here is the cured bug. He's really cute with his butterfly wing. So let's cover him up. Now I'm going to show you the back of the original bug. You can see that there is a space there, right? I did not push the clay to conform to the wing. I just let the clay on the back span the wing. And then I cut around like so. So I like the way that looks. doesn't bother me a bit. All right, so here is my bug. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to sand the back of the bug, of course. And I can use my abranette, abranette, like this, and just lightly sand like so. Okay, just to flatten it a bit. And that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but I can make it perfect. Maybe. Good. All right. Okay, now I'm going to try to get rid of the dust. Oh, man. I have rolled my gold clay through setting three of my pasta machine. I will now roll it through with the sanding sponge. All right. Now, oh, 
Let's work on paper. There we go. I'm gonna take some liquid clay and apply it to the back. And I think the tip is going to touch, so I'm just going to sand, I mean sand. I'm just going to apply a little bit of liquid to the tips of the wings. Okay, face down. Scalpel. I'm going to go around that little dot on the end. Let's get rid of some of this excess clay. Okay, now lift it. And here is where I'm just going to cut underneath the antenna. Because I didn't back the antenna, I just backed the disc at the end, then the head, then that upper section of the body, then the lower section, and the wings, okay, with that space between. Okay, so let me see if I can cut a little bit more off of this side so it matches the other side. And that's not too bad. Not too bad at all, although... I did cut away more from the other side. Just might have to be that way. All right, so there's the back. Let me put my signature cane on. And Mr. Bub goes back in the oven. For 40 minutes at 300 degrees in a cold oven.
Aw, yeah, I like them. Okay, so I will be back. Okay, so we're moving on to the antelope or whatever it is. Wapiti, eland, poor prey animal. Okay, so I've got my ball of clay. I'm going to make an elongated teardrop. Got a long face, long face. I'm going to cut it in half, set half aside, and I'm going to flatten it out a little bit more. Now, I made another one, and it was so ugly that I decided I better make, I better give it another try. So I'm going to raise his forehead a bit like that, and I'm gonna pull his face down a bit. Da, 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 da. Like that, hello. Give him like a little bit of a hollow there next to his, oops. Next to his nose, his nose is down here. Okay, now one of the mistakes I made in the last one, and I'll show you this ugly thing I made. Um, you know, it just wasn't getting any better. It just got ugly and it stayed, <laughs> it kind of stayed ugly. But I think my mistake, my first mistake, was in the selection of the kind of background cane. You know, because I'm going to put a, kind of a background cane on. And then on top of that cane are embellishment canes. Now that doesn't look too bad there. Okay. So I <laughs> started with this. I love this cane. Oh, excuse me. It just isn't right for this purpose. So it'll have to do something else. Okay, so now my choices here are like this guy or this guy or this guy. This is what I used for the bug. So maybe for this one, I should use this. Okay, so let's give this a try. I think it's a much more suitable cane than the other one I tried, which was wrong, so wrong. It was so wrong. I got a space there. I don't like that space. Okay, so let's start down here. Well, should I start at the forehead? Perhaps that's better. Maybe, let's see, where are your eyeballs going to be? Do I want this stripe running straight down? That makes the most sense to me. Something like that. Yeah, that's a good one. I would say that's a promising beginning. Much more promising than what I did last time. Yeah, it, it turned out really <laughs> not really attractive. Not an attractive piece. But you know, I have found that they aren't all attractive. Sometimes you get into a situation and you just have to try. And that is essentially what happened to me. I just simply had to try. I had no choice. Okay, now I want to fill these areas above 
What can I use? Something like this, perhaps? Something with a more of a pattern over the top and then along the bottom. Maybe I'll just use this. Okay, I think I have the bigger one. I even have dragonflies. I've got tons of leaves as well. Huh. Okay, so let's just do this. Take a look at it. See what it's looking like. Put it right there. Then I'm, I'm just going to push it down so it curves a bit. Like so. Cut off the excess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it again on the other side. Put it here, line it with the center, then kind of ease it around the curve, like so. Cut it off. Now, for some unknown reason, unknown to me, I decided that this guy should have basically four ears. One, two, three, four. So I, I decided that this time he would only have two. But he would have that nice ridge up the center. It just won't look like two additional ears. Like so. Okay, now let's do the same thing and put, maybe I'll just put something like this on the bottom. Simpler. And I'm going to try to restrain myself. You see, this doesn't really have that many surface embellishments. It has the butterfly wings, and then it has a nose. It has a couple little black and white stripes going on. But other than that, the pattern underneath is really showing through. I seem to be incapable of doing that at this moment, as illustrated by what I did that I will show you. I got a little carried away. Okay, here we go. That guy goes there, straight down the middle. Let this curve around. Cut the excess away. Push the clay down to the back. And if necessary, cut it. So see, that's kind of nice because this, these two leaves on the bottom and the fact that they're black, they kind of emphasize the lower area of the face, right? The muzzle, the deer muzzle is more amplified. Now I think I'll push these a little bit deeper than I had previously. Just a bit deeper, like that. Like so. Okay, eyeballs. Eyeballs, eyeballs. Okay, gonna roll another ball of white clay. That would make a great, very 
large ball. Be a tiny ball. So it really doesn't have to be big. And let's take a look at this guy. See, there's white and then there's a jelly roll and then there's just a teeny little crystal there at the eye. We're gonna do exactly the same because that seemed to be pretty successful. Okay, eyeballs, one is bigger. Hmm. La, la, la. Hmm. Okay, does that look even on both sides? little prey animal. Okay, where's the jelly roll? Ah, here it is. Now, it's not a typical jelly roll. It's one of my new jelly rolls, but I think it is absolutely perfect for this. And I'm hoping not to make an ugly piece. What, Louie? There's Lou. I don't know, you guys, anybody out there with an Australian Shepherd? Such smart dogs. He's too smart. It would have been easier if it'd be easier if I were smarter or he was a dumber. We might be a good match then. Okay. Da -da, da -da. Now I need very tiny wings. Let me compare the size. And you know what? You see the difference in the shape as well. The original wing on here is actually shorter and thicker, like wider. What I did here was kind of make it long and skinny. Now, another option I could actually turn to would be a feather. Oh, mackerel, I can't see anything disaster. And that feather cane. Ah, see, I found it. Now here's a feather cane. But I kind of think the orange is a better choice. But doesn't hurt to try. Doesn't hurt to try. Well, I don't know. This feather. See, the problem with this orange, it's like all this orange. And, you know, I love orange. There, without a doubt, I love orange. I'm not exactly sure. So let's put one on one side, one on the other side, and see if we can make a decision. I wish you guys could help me. Well, the orange is definitely different enough. I think that I feel that this is too different. 
So I'm thinking that the orange is better. So that's where we're going, orange. Now for things like the eyelids, the pieces that I'm cutting are a little bit thicker. Just a bit thicker. Okay. All right. Now, do I need to make your face longer? I'm thinking longer. So I'm looking at you. Okay, now let's put oh, ta -da, like that. Now, this can be thinner because these particular wings are going to be pressed directly against the clay. like that. <laughs> Let me try to swing this up like so. I'm not sure that that exactly works. Perhaps this needs to swing tighter to the eye. I think that's better in this case. You see here, you've got this light color, this light area, and and so when this wing just lays, it goes straight out across the cheek, I think it looks better. This looks like you forgot to cover something up, lady. In my opinion. So that's why I want to cover up some of that. Oh, I think the bug's ready. Okay, come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I still feel like the face is too short. Not quite long enough. All right. Well, that's not too bad. I did cheat. His eyes are closer together. Maybe his eyes should be closer together as well. I think they need to be closer together. I need to see if I can put them closer together. I think the worst that happens is that I just need to cut some more cane slices. And I happen to have plenty of cane, so 
I would rather make the correction now. then feel that okay so these will go back on but definitely the eyes need to be closer together Okay, so I'm going to bring a ridge out there so that the eyes can sit about right there and there. Okay, I think that's going to be much, much better. Because that's certainly the way these eyes are. They are closer together. Cut some more butterfly. I had the butterfly cane. Is this it? I guess so. And I'm going to try to do a better job. of doing what I did here. I keep uh, changing plans and wondering why it doesn't look the same at all. I have a problem in that way. I don't usually like to do the same thing twice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a bit of a problem. So in a sense, this is a very good exercise for me because it's making me look at things, really examine them and not just always think, oh, this is better. Well, it's not always better. Unfortunately, I have many examples of how it's not better. Okay, so that's already better for me. I mean, it looks better to me. I do like it better. Okay, so let's put the nose on. Let's see, what did I use for the nose before? 
for. What kind of nosy canes do I have? Okay, so I do have this nose. The noses are triangular. I have this nose, this purple nose, too bright, I think. This is a better choice so far. And you know what? I have a blue one. But can I make another nose? Hmm. I need a nose. What happens if I reshape this orange guy? Let me take a bit off force it into a triangle. What do you think, buddy? What do you think, buddy? Bigger. See, the nose on this guy's really tiny. Let me make it smaller. The orange doesn't bother me at all. I like the orange. better. Smaller is definitely better. Okay, so I want that line at the bottom. I'm going to give him a good size nose. Okay, you all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. I like him. I like him. I like him so much better than the other guy. No offense. I made the other guy too. Okay, now. Do I need... Do I? Or can I skip it? I'm skipping it. Let me check something out. You can get it if you really want to. Do, do, do. You can get it if you really want. <laughs> no, you know what? I really like this cane underneath. I like it. I don't see any reason to cover it up. So I think that's going to be it for his face for now. Because I have been over embellishing to the point where you know, my head feels like it's going to explode. Jump off my shoulders. And I don't really need to do that. Um, maybe less. Maybe less is more. Because I will give ears, link, and horns. You know what? Yeah, I like them this way. The next thing we have to think about are ears. Ears. What are we going to do about ears? Now, if I do something like... Oh, it's got to be a patterned ear. I need a patterned ear. Definitely patterned. Uh, 
How would you feel about being an ear? Maybe this is an ear. So I have to cut a thick slice just to see what this ear is going to look. You know what? That's a nice ear. That is a rather nice ear. Ear. Now I could just make it flat like that. It doesn't have to be sort of dimensional because this horn is going to come up. Now I'll probably make it a bit smaller. I can just cut the base off. Why not? But this is too thin. I need a, a thicker ear. Let me put the ears side by side. Let's cut the bases off. Why not? It's a rather nice looking ear. Now, this ear, I think deer ears, are they hot? I think they're a little low on the head, like more like this. Now, I might have given him a bit too much forehead. Might be able to draw that back a bit. I'm sorry, I didn't put your features in exactly the right place. Yeah, I think that's it. I am not going gaga cuckoo coconuts, which I tend to do, unless we add a crystal. <laughs> okay, so I am going to add a crystal to the corner of the eye right there. And I do have clear and I have AB, Aurora Borealis. So I'm going to do Aurora Borealis. Like, all right, they are. Okay. Push it in a bit. And I put another crystal. Close that before I spill the whole thing put it right there and try to get it in there without destroying everything ooh fancy 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 i like crystals i Use them sparingly. And I like sparkly stuff, but uh, to tell you the truth, for, for my work, I don't think I need a lot of crystal. Doesn't make me happy. No watch, I'll put crystals all over. Like that. Put crystals there. Don't 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 don't. You have to be careful. I think uh, crystals are like tattoos, and um, and plastic surgery. You can get so much into them that you don't quite know when to stop. Of course, it's not my place to say whatever anybody wants to do, they can do. Not my place. Okay, so let's put where the horns are going to be. And for that, I'm just going to cut kind of a thick slice off of this guy. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want.
Okay. Now, into these is where our horns are going to go. Okay. So I'm going to use the end of this brush and just slowly, slowly push in so that I create a little bit of a receptacle for the horn. Now, my intent when I started this project was not to make any more canes, like not to use to use the canes I have, not to make any more. I want that. For some reason in my studio, I do not have that right now. So I have to make a black and white striped slab. I'll be back. Black and white striped slab. Okay, I'm back. Eureka, look what I found. Remember this from the black and white series? I am not making another cane. I will not make another cane. I will use this. And, you know, I think it's going to be fine. Not going to look exactly like that other one, but not going to look like this. Well, let's see, could I, I can actually make it look very much like that. So let's do that. But what I have to do is reduce this. Oops, oopsie. Okay, so you see what I'm doing. I'm just taking these and putting them around. And maybe these, this is enough for both. Uh, I think it's going to be enough, but I don't want to have to do it again. So I'm going to cut one more piece and put it on because it's better to have a little too much than not enough. Okay, there you go. You know, that's what I always say, but that's why I always have all these canes too. Okay. So let's see if this is going to work. I'm going to start twisting. Twisting. Actually, I'm doing a different one <laughs> entirely. Oh, well, I mean, this might be really good. It might not be, but I'm not going to know until I do it. Okay. Ooh. I think this is going to be fine. I think it's going to be fine. Mostly, I just wanted the black and white, I think, so. See, when I did this, I didn't twist. I just thinned it out. Ooh. Ooh, that's kind of... Mm. I like it. I am liking it. Okay, so let me thin the ends. Okay. 
bring them out to a point. It's too much black at the end. I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so how long do I want these? How long are these? in the hole. Just a bit. Yeah, this is this one is a little bit simpler. I like it. Everything doesn't have to be over the top does it? It doesn't have to be over the top. No, when you put this in, make sure you get it in there. Okay, and it's probably going to help to thin this a bit so that it gets further down into that indentation you made. Okay, I'm really going to push that puppy in. No, I could put wire in there. Maybe that's what I should do. Okay, hold on. Okay, so here are a few eye pins. I mean, head pins, excuse me. But they have a ball at the end instead of that flat metal pad. So I'm going to cut them, make them a bit shorter, like so. I'm going to pull you out. Thank you. And... I'm just going to push this in. Now, this might be actually a little long. I want to be able to bend and curve this as I wish. Okay, so I'm just going to push this. I'm trying to get it straight in, but it, it's a little tough. Okay, how's that? How is that? So it's going to curve this way. And I'm going to take my jewelry pliers. And I'm just going to push that baby in there a little bit. And I did. I pushed it in. Now I'm just scooting the clay down. <laughs> It's a little crooked. I'm taking it out and starting again. You see, this is a little long and it's still slightly curved. So I'm shortening it even more. And let's try this way. Let's try sinking it in first and then straightening this out. And that is coming out of the middle. I've got to get that wire straight down the middle of the horn. Kind of, you know. Okay. I know I can do it. I just have to do it.
And when I bake it, I will put something underneath the horn to support it. You know, that wire seemed like a really good idea, but it's a little fussy. So you might not need it at all. It's nice having a little bit of extra support there at that joint, but it's been a little fussy getting it in and getting it centered. Oh, that was easier. That was much easier. So remember to cut the wire a little bit short so that it's not going to come popping out of the clay and do any other weirdo things to your piece. Okay? All right, that looks good. I like him. Maybe a uh, Eland? Is there an Eland? Okay, so now I'm going to bake it. I have to move him from my work surface to a ceramic tile. Okay, buddy. Here we go. And you just want to push it. Push, 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 push. So it's flat. And as I said, you need to support the horns. So let me get the Kleenex. Just a bit of tissue. Okay. Too much tissue. Might not be exactly the same, but I think that's pretty good. And I will weight the tissue down a bit. I've got some of these little weights, so I'll put it on the paper, and this is how he's going to be cured. So I will be back. Actually, huh. Okay, so I'm considering bending his horns back like that, like a big horned sheep. Hmm. I think that's probably better. Then it's not so iffy. This is a little iffy. This I think I have a much better chance of having the horns shaped exactly like that. So that that's it. Okay. Excellent. Let me get this in the oven. I'll be back. Okay, so it's time to make our jaguars. Mm -hmm, it is. Okay, so to begin with, we have to make the underlying scrap clay form. And uh, this is uh, it's a little big, so I'm just going to cut that much off and round it. I'm going to try very hard not to shoot down here because I must tell you this is like the second time I'm doing this part because my hands wandered off too much even for me. All right. So I'm just trying to form this into a ball. The clay is rather cold and a little stiff.
So it's just going to take a little bit of warming up and rolling and the usual. You know, my friends, I do get caught up in what I'm doing. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, sometimes I just like, off I go. Off I go. Okay, so I'm going to cut that much off. Set that aside. All right, so let's shape the jaguar face. All right. Now, what I'm going to do first, I think I'm going to draw the nose out. And that's just by pinching like that. And just pushing the clay around. Here are some eye sockets. I need my little friend Leslie Blackbird to help me with this. Okay. Yeah, cat faces are a little more difficult for me to do than dogs or than canine type faces or even like bear faces. I don't know exactly why, but they seem to be just a bit more difficult for me. I love kitty kitties. Let's push the nose up a bit. Of course, they're predators, so the eyes face forward, not to the sides. Let's see, would this be better if I just thinned the cheek area just a tad? Maybe pull the forehead out a bit. Hi, Louie. Louie's down here. Hi, Lou. Are you a good boy? Are you my good boy? What are you doing, huh? He's such a good dog. He's growing up. <sighs> he is really growing up. And it's about time. Okay, so let's just say that I'm going to stop right here because something tells me I could be pushing this little blob of clay around for a long time. I don't want to do that. I want to get started. Okay. I'm going to be seeing Leslie soon, so... I think we'll have a discussion on feline anatomy. Okay. So there you go. Eye sockets. Little nose will go here. Little mouth will be down here. Like so. All right. So the cane I'm going to use is this one. It's a floral cane with a lot of different elements. And I used it here. And one of the things I like most about it is the way this part of the cane just kind of goes down the sides of the muzzle. So let me cut just a couple of slices. Hopefully that'll be enough. And the way I've positioned it is like this. It's not point, the point on the nose, which I do quite uh, quite uh, often. And it wouldn't be bad. I mean, in this case, look, there are the eye sockets right there. 
Hmm, maybe I should have, well, I'm not going to try something different. I have a tendency to do that. Just like, oh, this is a good idea. I think I'll do this instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just got to stick with the program for once. And not go wandering off. Which I have been known to do. Which is okay. But perhaps now is not the time to do that. All right, get in there. Okay, top of the head. Now, I'm going to try to ease this in a bit. And maybe the best way to deal with this area down here, the chin area, is really just to cut right here, right down the middle. Then to swing this side over and then cut down the imaginary line that divides the face in two, like so. Okay, cut the back. Like that. Now I'm gonna take this half, pull it over, and then cut this piece down what is the imaginary line, center line down the face. That works out well, like so. Okay, so now I have covered the face from the forehead down beyond the chin. All right, I need several more pieces. Let me cut them. And fitting on this side may be a little more difficult because, of course, you've got the terrain, right, uh, to deal with. So let's just see if I can get it aligned in one place where it will be probably the most noticeable. Then I'm going to cut the excess away, just like so. And now try to work the clay in and ease it around the form. Cut the excess away. Now let's take care of the other side, like so. I have to say, this kind of fitting part, I enjoy. I really do enjoy it. Because it's like a puzzle. For me, this is a puzzle. And I do like puzzles. All right. So here you see, I've got to fill this small space. I'll straighten that out a bit. And I'm, I think I'm going to cut like this in half. 
just like that. Just two pieces. And now I will try. It's just a little small, but I think it's going to be all right. Because I will take this. and roll over and the slices are not so thin there's enough clay there to push and that's what i'm doing i'm actually pushing the clay so that it closes it just spreads out just a bit okay so let's do the same thing on the other side So that will go right in that space. Is this the right way? No, this is the right way. No, <laughs> I had it right the other time. This is the right way. Okay. Yeah, this little cane is actually, I think, it, I think it works very well for the jaguar because these little peachy dots, they actually look kind of like spots. And now I'm just rolling to try to join the pieces together a bit. Okay, so there is the basic face. All right, so let's start on the eyes. And I think I'm going to use this cane for the eye. But, but oh, excuse me, I just burped. I have to give him his eyeballs. Now, this form is far from ideal because really um, the sockets go all the way down, right? They're just pushed down. But eyes are actually more like let me get the end of a brush. The eye sockets are probably more along like this, right? More like this. Like this. And what I have here is this. Where this the out the outer part of the eye is totally flattened out like this there's no flesh on the outside of the eye so it's not really ideal this would not be in any way a realistic animal but that's okay for us today all right, so let me cut this in half. Now I have the two eyes. And let me put one eye, and that's an awfully big eye. That's like a bug-eyed, bug-eyed jaguar. I don't really want that. So I have to make it a bit smaller. I think 
go off of it. Just push the inner part of the eye and just a bit. All right, so I rolled a tiny ball of white clay and I'm gonna cut it in half and put one half here. Er, get in there. And the other one on the other side. Maybe I should make a winking jaguar. Nah. Okay, so there you go. Okay, now he needs his eyes. Okay, let's just put these in like so and facing forward like that. Da -da. Da -da -da. Okay, I will be back in a moment. I have to get a leaf. All right, so I think for eyelids, I'm going to use this tiny leaf. You see? I tried feathers, but uh, you know, they were just the wrong color. And even though the feathers were around the eyes, he started looking like very birdy. All right, so we need two for below the eyes and we need two for above. So let's put the ones below first. around the outside if I can not too bad okay yes this is better you can see it They seem to move independently, and when they do, they go off. I'll tell you one thing that is great is being able to do this recording and editing and doing 
classes myself without having to have a lot of people help me. It wasn't always so. I worked in the film business many, many, many years ago. And uh, I worked in the news business too. And it used to take a lot more people to get these jobs done than it does now. The equipment's just amazing. Changed everything. I mean, heck, guys, I'm shooting this on my phone, and I think it looks really good. Okay, life would be perfect if I didn't have a dog underneath me. Okay, actually, I guess that does make life a little more perfect, having him. All right, so let's make the nose. Now, this little nose piece, I don't know why I don't have some of that sitting around here somewhere but I apparently don't, so I have to reshape this, which is what it is, right? It's just a, a Starry Night Jelly Roll. So let me just, I'm gonna put this line, this is the base of the nose. So I'm just going to push just like that. Nothing too difficult to do. Yeah, but it's kind of a mystery. How come I don't have some of that right here? It's a mystery. Because that's, it's the same cane. Or am I just not seeing it? Okay, what do we, what do you need now? You need that. Okay, so what I've done is I'm just taking, this is actually from uh, the basket weave that was part of the black and white series. So this, I'm just cutting a tiny little piece and I am going to use this around one eye and this around the other eye and this little tiny piece is going to go right there under the nose like so. Now, let me see, how did I do this last time?
cute. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, now we need some pupils. We need pupils. Got the iris, need some pupils. Now this particular cane was a real bullseye, it had a black center. So perhaps I will give you crystal pupils. What do you think, dude? Okay, you want red eyes? Is that a little too alarming? Orange eyes might be a little alarming. Might be a little shocking. Oh, it's pretty serious. Okay, so this I think is a color called vitreal medium. And this color has a little more violet. I think it's better. This is kind of shocking, this uh, hyacinth. All right, so let's push those puppies in, and then we need ears. also good. The eyes were sticking out kind of far. Oh, dude. Okay, we need ears. Mm -hmm. We need ears. Now, the last time I made ears, I used this. You can see the ears here and here. I do have other options. These are kind of interesting, but that white line is a little faint. It would be better if that white line, oh, was like this. This is better. Okay. All right, so you're getting new ears. Not that I didn't like the old ears, just that I think maybe these ears are better. Okay, so let's cut two rather thick slices and see how we go, because it might just be this. What do you think? That looks a little silly. He looks a little silly. Maybe a little lower. That's better. Less like Mickey Mouse. Okay, I'm going for it. But you know, those little ears are sticking out up quite quite a bit. So I think what I'm going to do is a thin right here, just a little. And this thinned part will be tucked under the head. I'm going to be putting clay all across the back anyway won't really see this. I just don't want it to be quite so, to stick up quite so far. That would be Louie. Little Louis.
Now, I did not add a lot of additional canes on the surface. Um, I went through kind of a bad period, and you'll see at the end what happened. But it made me a little gun shy, or a little cane shy, and not wanting to go too far overboard because the line between interesting and OMG is sometimes a very fine line. I headed into OMG big time. So let us look. Oh, he's cute. He's cute. I still, of all of them, I think the bugs are my favorites. That's just me. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to do more work, actually, on this and work a little harder at it and see if something occurs to me. Okay, so I am going to cure him, and then I will be back. Okay, so here we are at the end of this little session. My goal as I started was to make these masks like this, but I didn't have any of the canes that I needed to make these particular ones. I, I didn't have, I don't think I had anything really suitable that would have ended up with this. So um, I then proceeded to make these jaguars, which are really ugly. And I mean, you can't even see the pattern below. There's a cane pattern below, but you can't even see them. So these are failures. Goodbye. I thought, well, maybe I should start simpler. So I reached out and found my bug. This was in my surface treatments book. I really like it, but the goal for me was to use canes that I have, not to make new ones. Then I made this using leaves, using canes, using, and, and I even managed to get a butterfly in there. And I thought, well, this is okay. You know, I don't consider this a failure. So then I showed you making this guy. And I, I like this one too. I like this one too. And I particularly like the cane underneath. The cane I've had for a long time and never really knew what to do with, short of cutting slices and calling it good. So anyway, that's where that went. Then I decided to do a... Um, Oh, an elk, a PT, uh, whatever this is, a deer. No, it's got horns, a, a sheep. I don't know what it is. It's one of those animals. It's a prey animal. And I thought, okay, I can try this. Let's see. And um, this was sh so shocking to me that I continued and made possibly the ugliest thing I've made in my entire life that I am going to show you now, but it is seriously ugly. It is so ugly <laughs> that it's kind of shocking to me how ugly, but it is a reminder that around every corner, ugly lurks. That is ugly. And, uh, you know, it's so ugly that it doesn't teach me anything but make me feel bad. So this is going in the garbage along with these that are also pretty darn ugly and just an exercise in going over the top and not knowing when to stop. Ugly. So I was so kind of shocked by this, I went completely the other way. <laughs> and, and so... The only applied pieces are the 
the butterfly wings and this little cane. And I did add these because there was this gigantic space between the eyes. But I'm, I'm probably not going to do any more than this, than that. Okay. Then I decided it was time to tackle the jaguar. And in the same kind of continuing the same frame of mind, I added very few slices. But what I like about this is the placement of the base slices because it kind of emphasizes the shape of the muzzle here. So, you know, I don't think this is unsuccessful. I don't know that it's the most successful thing. I think I could do better, but I know for a fact I have done worse. <laughs> so that is the end of class. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got a few laughs out of it. I hope you uh, learned something about how hideously ugly lurks around everyone's corner. And will soon be in someone's garbage. Okay, so anyway, until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. And you know what? I will work more on, on these. Maybe I'll try to reproduce some canes and stuff like that. And Okay, so yours won't look anything like these because you're starting with completely different things. But uh, I hope you have fun. Okay, so until we meet again. I'm Donna Cato.